Welcome to the module on local self governance in India in the context of 73rd and 74th amendment act of constitution of India. I am CB your lecturer for this module. Learning objectives of this module. The objective of this module is to help the students of social work to understand the concept of local self government, the history and organization structure of local self governance in India the features of the 73rd and 74th amendment act of the constitution of the India, the concept of Trita system in local governance and finally, the concept of Grama Sabha. Now, we are going to discuss the major advantages of the local self government all over the globe. The first, the social welfare activities are ensured at grassroots level without red tapism. Second, welfare activities are planned, budgets framed and resources mobilized locally. Third, work can be completed in a time because of the financial autonomy. The next is participation of every section of the community is promoted. People became self reliant and independent. Political, social and civil consciousness develops among the people and finally, national consciousness and patriotism are strengthened among the people of the particular uh, country. The local government is a distinctive form of public administration with following features. The first, a local government is an elected form of government. Second, it has multiple functions. Third is local operations. The fourth is well defined structure of the system and finally, it is subordinate to parliament. Now, we are going to discuss the historical background of the local self governance in India. India has been rightly described as a land of village panchayats. Historical roots of local self government in India from the ancient past to its present pattern of urban and rural bodies reflect a distinct impact of the British period. The history of the Panchayat Raj institutions in India can be divided into following periods. The first ancient era, second is British period and finally, post independence period. Raj the term means rule and panchayat means a group of five persons selected by the villages. It indicates that there was a method of self government existed in ancient India. In the Rig Veda, there is a mention of Sabha, Samadhi and Vidit as local units. Later, the panchayats become a group of five elected persons of the village who decide village disputes. The king used to get the approval of the Sabha or Samidhi regarding certain functions and decisions in ancient India. In the Ramayana, we see the administration was divided into two parts, Pur and Janpat, which means city and village respectively. Mahabharata also explains the concept of self government at village level. In the Gupta period, the policy of decentralization of powers was adopted and the village was the smallest unit of governance. Self governance was not the objective of the British government, but they rather looked for the protection of imperial interests. During the British period, more attention was given to the urban administration rather than rural administration. From 1920 to 1937, local self government was established in the provinces and people representatives controlled the provincial administration. From 1938 to 1947, local self government was in a stage of rejuvenation and reconstruction. The organization of Panchayati Raj came as an important step in the direction of rural development in India. The launching of the community development program on the 2nd October 1952 set the stage for organization of Panchayati Raj institutions in India. Now, we are going to discuss the organization structure of the Panchayati Raj uh, system or the local self governance in India. The decentralized democracy is a most important component of the Panchayat Raj system. 
the 73rd and 74th amendment act of the constitution of India was a landmark in the history of the democratic decentralization. The 73rd amendment act of the constitution of India is commonly referred as Panchayati Raj act and the 74th amendment act of the constitution of India in the year 1992 is named as Panchayat Nagarapaliga act. After passing the constitution 73rd amendment act the three tier system came into existence in Panchayat Raj administration. Now, we are going to discuss about the Panchayat Raj system in India. Panchayat Raj system in India is based on the constitutional amendment which happened in the year 1992 and the 73rd amendment introduced across the broad three tier system of Panchayat Raj institutions at village Panchayat, block level and district levels. There is a three tier system existing in the Panchayat Raj system according to this act. The first is district panchayat or Silla Parikshit, second block panchayat or Tahasils and finally, Grama panchayat or village panchayat which is in the grass root level. District panchayat or Silla Parikshit, this is the apex body of the Panchayat Raj administrative system which is existing in India. District Panchayat president is elected and he is the head of the district panchayat who administers the district with elected representatives and officials of the district administration. The major functions of the district panchayat consist of examining and approving the annual budgets of the block panchayats and issuing various directives for their effective performance. The district panchayat also coordinates with various government departments in the district and distributes funds for various activities. Another function is of this Silla Parikshit or the district panchayat is to collect various statistics of the district. The district panchayat meets once in a month. Now, we are going to discuss about block panchayat or panchayat samadhi at block level. It is the middle or intermediary tier in the three tier system that undertakes all developmental activities in the rural areas falling under its jurisdiction. The elected president is the elect executive head of the block panchayat who has power to monitor, supervise and control the administration at block level. The major functions of a block panchayat includes implementation of the central government schemes, preparation of the reports regarding the activities of the Grama Panchayat in its jurisdictional area, collection of taxes and ensuring physical infrastructure facilities for the operational area. Now, we are going to discuss about the uh, Grama Panchayat which is in the grassroot level of the Panchayati Raj administrative system. Grama Panchayat is an executive organ at the village level government. The main functions of the Grama Panchayat are managing local affairs and promoting village development with the help of available resources and with government assistance. These resources are essential and technical in nature. The head of the Grama Panchayat is popularly known as Grama Panchayat President who administers the system with the help of other elected representatives and officials like Grama Panchayat Secretary. Now, we are going to discuss about the major functions of a Grama Panchayat institution in India. The first function of a Grama Panchayat is to provide latrines to households and community based toilets, maintaining water supply works, third is collection of the taxes and other fees, next is universal enrollment of the children in schools, universal immunization of the children, prompt registration of the birth and death providing sanitation and drainage, construction, maintenance and repair of the public streets, street light and removing encroachments, maintenance of community assets hosted in the panchayats, maintenance of records related to the population census, crop census, cattle census and census of the people who are unemployed and, and, and under the uh, below poverty line. The Grama Panchayats may also make provisions for carrying out 
within the panchayat area any work or measure which is likely to promote the health safety education comfort convenience or social and economical well being of its inhabitants in the particular jurisdictional area further article 243d provided for reservation of a scheduled caste and scheduled tribes and women at all levels while the reservation for the scheduled caste and scheduled tribes are proportionate to their actual population not less than one third of the seats should be reserved for women in every panchayat seats shall be reserved for scheduled caste and scheduled tribes the number of the seats of the reserved shall be are nearly as may be the same proportion to the total number of seats to be filled by direct election in the panchayat as the population of the scheduled castes in the panchayat area or the scheduled tribes in that panchayat area bears to be the total population of that area these seats may be allotted by rotation to different constituencies in a panchayat now we are going to discuss about the concept of grama sabha grama sabha has been in vogue in most states in india grama sabha is basically a form of democracy it is an institutional mechanism of participatory democracy it provides an opportunity to all sections of the village to participate in the development process which is happening in the particular grama panchayat one of the unique feature of the grama sabha is to provide social sanction to the panchayat activities now we are going to discuss about the key features of grama sabha the quorum of four grama sabha meeting remains 1/10 and it is essential to have 1/3 of the quorum as women members the grama sabha will work as a supervisory body it audits and regulates the functions of the grama sabha and it also provides recommendations uh, to the grama panchayat regarding various activities the key role of grama sabha are follows first its involvement in micro planning second the role in social audit of grama panchayats third rectification of the panchayat accounts and balance sheets next is identification and approval of the beneficiaries and finally supervisory and regulatory functions now we are going to discuss the salient features of the 74th amendment act of the constitution of the india nagara palika institutions are functioning in india based on the 74th amendment act of the constitution of the india the structure of the nagara palika institutions after the 74th amendment act of 1992 is as follows in the apex level there is mahanagar nigam or the municipal uh, corporation the second is nagar palika or a municipality and third is nagar panchayats that consists of notified area council or the city council mahanagar nigam or municipal corporation mahanagar nigam or municipal corporation is apex body in nagar palika system this body consists of a population of more than 1 million the mahanagar nigam is headed by the mayor and the members are known as councillors who are elected for a period of 5 years reservations for women scheduled tribes and scheduled castes are available according to the 74th amendment act of the constitution of india now we are going to discuss about the nagar palika or municipality a municipality is an urban body which less than a population of 1 lakh the members of the nagar palika are elected once in 5 years the town is divided into wards based on population the municipality is responsible for water supply health roads solid waste management etc each municipality consists of reserved seats for women scheduled tribes and scheduled castes as per the provisions in the 74th amendment act of the constitution of india now we are going to discuss about the nagar panchayats nagar panchayats function in an urban area where population is more than 30000 and less than 1 lakh inhabitants the head of the nagar palika is known as nagar panchayat chairman who is ruling the system with other ward members the duration of the elected body is for a 5 years and seats are reserved for women scheduled caste and scheduled tribe as per the provisions of the amendment act 
Now we are going to discuss about the functions of the municipal bodies in India. The functions of a municipal body in India are classified into two, they are essential function and agency function. Now we are going to see essential municipal functions. The first essential municipal function is urban planning and town planning. Second is regulation of land use and construction of buildings. Third is planning for economic and social development. Next is road and bridges, water supply for domestic, industrial and commercial purposes, public health, sanitation, conservancy and solid waste management, fire services, urban forestry, preventive health care, provisions of urban facilities and amenities, running burial grounds, cattle ponds and prevention of cruelty to animals, registration of birth and death on time, providing street lights, public transportation and allied services, regulation of slaughterhouses and finally, slum improvement and upgradation. Now, the next is agency function. The first agency function is promotion of ecology and environment. Second is safeguarding the interest of the weaker sections of the society. Third is urban poverty alleviation. Next is promotion of the cultural, educational and ascetic aspects in the local area. Primary education of the children and primary health care services. And according to a study which is conducted by Ahimit in the year 2004, the major functions of a Nagarpalika institutions in India consist of urban planning, land use, water supply, repair and maintenance of the road, reconstruction of the bridges, slum improvement, health and sanitation improvement and promotion of irrigational services and finally, library services. Now, we will be concluding this session. The local self-government is a decentralized form of power which reaches the grassroots level and ensures participation of all sections of the society. The success of democracy depends on the planning as well as the implementation of the planned programs. The roles of the Panchayat Raj and Nagarpalika institutions are also important in implementing need-based, people-centric and sustainable programs for the people. This will help in the sustainable development of our nation. Thank you very much for attending this session.